Hi everyone, it's Dr. Romani and welcome back to this YouTube channel on narcissism, narcissistic relationships, and healing from narcissistic relationships. Welcome back to our personality series about your personality. And today, talking about my fave, maybe second fave, introversion. So in this series on your personality, your personality, and how it intersects with narcissism, today we're going to talk about introversion. This series is not about their personality. We spent enough time talking about their narcissism, but instead on yours. And just like their personality isn't going to change much, neither is yours. However, certain personality styles are going to put us at different kinds of risk with regard to getting into what happens while we are in the relationship and what healing looks like. We have talked about neuroticism and extroversion so far. So now I'll take a little bit of a sort of a side road here and talk about introversion. Traditionally, introversion has been treated as just the opposite or the counterweight to extroversion. It's not. Introversion is just not merely the opposite of extroversion. But sadly, in the classical test that measures this five-factor personality model, it's often regarded that way. That misses the unique elements of introversion as being its own sort of freestanding personality construct. Unfortunately, introverted people are sort of viewed as the opposite, like I said, of extroverts. And what it means then is we don't define this clearly. Introverted people tend to be more quiet. They spend more time in self-reflection and in their own heads. They can be very measured before they speak and not only appreciate, but may sometimes even need solitude. A healthy and balanced take on introversion is that it is calm, solitude seeking, person who has a lot of concentration, deliberation, reflective, thought, a person who's thoughtful, contemplative, introspective. Researcher Jonathan Cheek talks about four types of introverts, the thinking, restrained, social, and anxious. And frankly, it's really only the anxious introverts that sort of map onto this idea of introverted people as more socially anxious and ruminative. The other types aren't like that. Now, introverts can get their sociability on and be really social when it matters for anything that feels important to them. They are good planners. They're good at delaying gratification. Their social networks, they may be smaller, but introverts often have deeper and higher quality social networks. Some of you are saying, well, can we be a little bit of both? Aren't... I think all of us sort of lean a little bit more one way or another, but it is a continuum. In the middle, where introversion kind of meets extroversion, folks right there in the middle have been termed ambiverts, or folks who are able to get their social selves on from time to time and be good with it, and also do well both with solitude, so they can do well, so solitude and social settings. At the high, high levels of introversion, you may have someone who is just very isolated or very solitude seeking and really doesn't cultivate social relationships. But what does introversion in general mean for entering narcissistic relationships? I personally think introverts may actually have a little bit of protection, the sort of being in their heads, a little less interested in social settings, that less social grandstanding, that may not be as attractive to narcissistic people or relationships. However, the one type of narcissism where introversion could be at risk for being drawn in is with the vulnerable slash covert narcissistic folks who can be quite introverted themselves. So it could be that there is that shared affinity which can create a vulnerability. In the relationship with a narcissist and an introverted person, the narcissistic person may not have patience for the introverted person who may be in their heads more and may even be more conflict averse and not give in to the baiting. However, the really problematic flip side is that an introverted person may not have a larger social network to help weather the storm, may be prone to rumination, and could possibly even self-blame on the premise that they were not being more social and open and in the relationship the way the narcissistic person wanted. 
An introverted person may have a slight risk and also endure being treated with contempt and mockery for being up in their heads a lot. Introverted people do tend to pause before speaking. Well, can you imagine that in this day and age? They actually stop and think before they open their mouths. And that approach actually inflames narcissistic people who are often just impulsive and interrupt. And that can just be a very toxic dynamic for introverted people to have to navigate. Now, when it comes to getting out of a relationship or even healing from one of these relationships, the introspective nature of an introverted person can be a blessing and a curse. A blessing because introverted people may be more willing to take the time to sort of think it out, but also have to balance the curse, the greater likelihood of rumination, which is a bane of all survivors of narcissistic abuse. Remember, healthy introverts may have smaller social networks, but like I said, the, the smaller group of people they have can be quite robust, which can be a real help as a person navigates the healing process. However, at the farther end of the introverted spectrum, a smaller network and greater social anxiety can result in less likelihood of having sounding boards, support, and the greater rumination and self-blame and self-doubt can also muddy the waters of healing for introverts. Now listen, I, yeah, I, I'm not going to not talk about my introversion. I'm a natural introvert who has gotten into narcissistic relationships. I actually personally think it was more of my agreeableness that got me into trouble, and that's going to be the next one we talk about in this series, than the introversion. In fact, to make the relationships work, to make these narcissistic relationships work, I did find myself trying to be more extroverted, which is very much against my nature, and it exhausted me. Honestly, if a person can just honor their introverted self in a world that doesn't appreciate it, it could be a great hedge against being in the exact kinds of environments that narcissistic people gravitate towards. However, you do need to be on watch for those often quite socially anxious, covert, vulnerable, narcissistic folks and for the communal do-gooders who can often trick us, any of us. And listen, I'm going to give a big hug to all of my fellow traveler introverts out there. It's a funny world because introverts have um, often been, introversion is often associated with sort of poor mental health on certain outcomes just because it's a less valued quality. Extroverts really sort of run the show in, in the Western world. But I do think that in some ways introverts are just not as compelling to narcissistic people. So that's a great kind of a gateway thing. But once you're in, I think a narcissistic person really can do a number on an introvert by sort of making it about like, well, if you weren't in your head all the time, if we could just go out sometimes, obviously I went and talked to somebody else because you don't really talk to me. That kind of nonsense. I'm telling you, just stay home. Sometimes it's the best way to avoid the narcissist. You know what's so interesting? I made this introversion video and I said to my team, wait, 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 we got, I want to add one more point. So consider me adding one more point too. So it's why it's a little, it looks a little bit thrown together. Here's my thought. Yeah, I love me, my introverts. And I think I was so excited that I forgot to make this point, which is that let me tell you one superpower that introverts have when it comes to healing from narcissistic abuse. It is that capacity for solitude. One of the pieces of guidance I give to a lot of people when they're going through healing from narcissistic abuse is to spend some time alone. So much of us gets defined by the narcissistic relationship or the narcissistic system that probably that we, we don't do that important work of figuring out who we are separate from that relationship. And the place to do that is solitude. Well, introverted people are sort of purpose built for that. And that capacity to be alone for a while can actually give that place of rest and nurturance that allows us to sort of connect to ourselves and do this really hard work of figuring out who we are separate from this relationship. So I didn't want to forget to make that point because that solitude does serve you well. So introverts, one more takeaway for you. That's, that ability to be alone may actually be one of the most useful abilities you have as you try to heal from a narcissistic relationship. Thanks again.